Oh, my name is Shannon Yeager. I'm the director of TechDam US Incorporated, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Costruzione Aeronautique TechDam, which is the manufacturer of these wonderful aircraft. It's been around since uh, 1948. It's a fantastic company, very prolific in, in Europe, and I, I think you can tell now that we're really starting to come into our own here in, in the US uh, and other places around the world, in 60 countries at this time. What we do here is we actually are the reassembly facility and distribution location for TechNAM um, in the U.S. What I have behind me here today is the uh, P-2010. It's our four-place single. It's a standard category Part 23 aircraft. It's got quite a few neat little options on it. This aircraft does have three doors. The nice part about the doors is that you're going to get in the front seats from in front of the strut. You're going to get in the back one from behind the strut. No climbing on wings required. Also, there's some, in, some opportunities of change with the propeller. It can come with a 180 horsepower engine and it'll come with a fixed pitch propeller. We also have, like this one has, a constant speed two blade propeller. Our other option is actually an engine option. It is a IO390 215 horsepower engine that comes with a three blade constant speed propeller. You know, of course, the landing, the landing statistics don't really change in the aircraft, but if you go with the bigger engine, your takeoff roll is definitely shorter, your climb rate is definitely better, and things like that. It's a great aircraft to be a trainer only, to be a trainer plus your first aircraft to really start going places, or if your mission again in that 400 nautical mile range mission that you're going to have for yourself, you might have been thinking about a 182, even though it kind of looks like it might be a 172, it's much more comparable to a 182 both with the speed as well as the room inside and the ability to carry nearly a thousand pounds. So a couple of interesting things about our aircraft. Uh, one of the things that's interesting is our nose landing gear. So our nose landing gear actually does not go straight up the firewall. It actually pivots off the firewall with the gas oleo strut going up into the engine mount. So in a training scenario, if somebody was to hit pretty hard, it's not going to send that up and take a fire, make a firewall issue, which I'm sure anybody out there training with a 172 might have had happen once or twice with their students. Other thing is the wheel track is a little bit wider. It is a castering nose wheel with a 90 degree turn in the front, so very, very easy and very stable and wide when it's on the ground. Always got to tell you about the high wing clearance that's there. You'll also notice that there's no stall strips on the front because as you go outboard, the last five ribs on the outside, they're both canted up. So we don't have as much dihedral in the center of the wing, but you got it more out by the wingtips. They're also rolled down for a different uh, alpha incident angle when it comes into the air. So it is going to provide the ailerons with lots of control in slow speed flight. It's definitely a comment I get when we go up and we fly in slow speed flight. The, the controllability of this aircraft is very, very solid. It also has a longer cord on the wing than uh, other aircraft do of this type or of this range, which means we also have a much better ride, if you will, through the uh, IFR conditions, especially when it's really bouncing around in actual. Uh, so it makes it a lot better for us to be able to both do training as well as maneuver and those kind of things as well. Um, it's a very enjoyable aircraft to fly. We have something else that's unique is that the fuselage is carbon fiber, but the wings, strut, landing gear, stabilator, and rudder are all metal. So we also know that well, where, do, where does hangar rash tend to happen? It happens out in our wings. Anybody out there that's had to deal with a composite repair on a composite airplane wing knows what I'm saying when I say metal is a whole lot easier to fix and to inspect following a ding ding into the hangar. We can just take a look inside, put a new panel on it, which we do carry right here in the U.S. You're not relying on it coming from another country. We have them here uh, for you. So we put the, the right material in the right place. We put the carbon fiber fuselage around to protect the occupant and the passenger, giving them a wider location to sit in with a lot of strength around them to protect them in that little cocoon there where, where we sit, but yet leave other areas to take the and absorb the impact of any energy in a collision with uh, with terrain. So it's got a lot, a lot of good things going for it. In terms of general performance specs on this one, it's obviously going to de depend upon your engine and propeller combination selection. So we do give you a wide range. We are trying to, to assist and help out those in the flight training community as well as those that want to actually utilize their aircraft either for business, for personal travel, um, in their own personal flying. So it, it is in the range of about uh, seven, eight hundred feet on the uh, takeoff roll, depending on the engine selection. Um, you're also going to be climbing out at about eight hundred to eleven hundred feet per minute, depending upon again the engine selection. Uh, the ceiling on the aircraft is listed as twelve thousand, is what it's listed as in there. 
the uh, landing stats are about the same as the takeoff stats in terms of uh, what's required for landing. The landing doesn't change obviously with the uh, speed of the aircraft. The aircraft has a couple of options of interior as well as engine. So the price can range from about 387000 up to about 450000 It's kind of the top mark of what you can get to. The IO360 engine comes with standard a fixed pitch. Uh, two blade prop, you can get as an option a two blade constant speed. The IO390 comes with a three blade constant speed MT propeller. In, in general, when you look at maintenance costs, the, the maintenance costs are pretty applicable if you want to do a direct head-to-head -head comparison, very, very similar to the 172. And in some cases, depending on what engine you choose, because if you choose the, uh, the uh, 180 horsepower engine, you can also run unleaded fuel, which is going to help you with a little bit of your maintenance costs. Um, but it's pretty comparable to the 172, but what you get out of it is an aircraft that performs much more like a 182 in terms of its load carrying capability, its over distance, its speed, and definitely it's ride and IFR, uh, even though the wing loading is much closer to a uh, 182 as well. So the maintenance is about the same as a 172, and that's kind of how it goes. If you'd like to get more information, you've got a couple places to call. Number one is uh, TechMe US, which you can get us at 863-655-2400, and we're here in Sebring, Florida. You can also on the web go to technam.com, and that is T-E-C-N-A-M.com.